Afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Sean Miller here, and uh, I wanted to take a few minutes to take you behind the scenes of how I built this dashboard for Week Four's uh, Workout Wednesday Challenge. Uh, how to combine relative and custom date ranges in a single dashboard. Uh, so let's get to it. So as you can see here, we've got a dashboard, and we've got some selections up here. It's a very simple dashboard. Uh, I wanted this challenge to mainly focus on the user experience, so it doesn't really matter what's in the dashboard, but it's mainly how how I got these uh, these button selections up at the top to kind of do what they want. So right now, I've, I have everything filtered to the last 14 days, uh, but you can go in here and you can select the last 30 days. When you select the when you select the last end days, a text box opens and you're able to update this uh, this input here. So if we wanted to just see the last 10 days, uh, we could do that. Uh, and separately, uh, lastly, we also have this custom dates. Uh, so when you click on that, we get two uh, date inputs uh, to put in here, a start date and an end date. Uh, and this is for if your users don't really know the number of days that they need to look at, but they know that they need to look at a specific date range. Um, you're able to do that as well. So you can come in here and you can change these dates to whatever you whatever you need. So, and then whenever you select off of that either of those, uh, you'll you'll notice that the the date inputs uh, go away. So, let's dig into how I built this. So. <clears throat> what we're going to start with is um, we can just do, we'll just go into this sheet. It doesn't really matter what. And so as you can see, I've created uh, quite a few different uh, parameters. Uh, so I have my anchor date, and that's really kind of the, the fundamental. That's kind of where everything's anchored off of. Um, I mentioned in the requirements that the, end, that the anchor date needed to be uh, the max date of our data set. Now, um, the reason I chose to do this as a parameter as opposed to just a regular field uh, is because I, I did everything as custom date, uh, or as sets. So <clears throat> in doing a set, if we look at the set, um, we are just doing a conditional set on order date that is greater than, and then we do some date math on uh, our anchor date. And the anchor date is basically just a fixed level of detail, uh, finding the max value of our order date. And the reason I chose to do this is because in my line of work, today, the today function uh, doesn't really work for me uh, because I, I need to have a date run out period of time. Uh, so by, by doing this in a parameter, I'm able to easily flex that. The other uh, parameters that I created were uh, the anchor date, the date selector. So this is the actual uh, values that we're going to be uh, referencing in our uh, parameter action uh, as we kind of build this as we build this out. Uh, the start and end dates. And then the end days, uh, the parameter um, input control that shows up whenever you select the last end days is simply just a uh, just an integer an integer parameter uh, set to um, whatever value you want to put in there. So the next thing that I really wanted to um, focus on is how I did the the date filtering. So I noticed in a lot of the uh, the tweets that uh, some people try to do sheet swapping. Um, this is all one sheet. If you set up your, if you use sets, um, it's really easy to do this all in one sheet. So, if we look at these sets and how I built them, uh, we're just doing, uh, we're just capturing sets of order dates that are greater than or equal to uh, whatever uh, condition that we set. And then in the date filter, uh, what I've done, you can see here is I just did a case statement that looks at each of those. When the date selector uh, is one, then give me that set. Uh, when it's two, give me the other set, and so on and so forth. And then the custom date uh, syntax is, is this right here. So very, very similar to these, uh, but uh, we're just looking for dates between the start date and end date. And so now whenever I switch my parameter value, you can see this uh, automatically updates uh, accordingly as I need it, which is pretty cool. 
So the uh, the other thing that I wanted to cover is how I got these parameter action buttons to show up like this. So there's two ways that you can do this. Um, I chose to do a uh, I chose to alias. So I use the ship mode. I just alias the values to have them show up uh, what I what I needed to have them show up as. Uh, you could do this with any dimension field in your data set uh, that you're not using in any other sheets uh, and just alias as many values as you need uh, to do that. And then once you do that, uh, you're able to create this case statement where you're basically going to say based on the uh, based on the values of that dimension that you're aliasing, then you're just going to set them up to match the date selector parameter that you had. So you can see if we edit this parameter, our date selector parameter, and we have our calculated field window open, you can see this is my last n. I've aliased the first class dimension member as the last 14 days, uh, and that has a value of 1. We're just mapping out how we want these things to connect. And that's a pretty simple way to do it uh, through uh, keeping everything within one data source. The other option, uh, which is really an interesting idea, is to use a secondary data source, uh, which is really, really simple. Basically a really simple two-column uh, field. So we'll say text field, and we'll say value. And then you just come in here and you just say the last 14 days, the last 30 days, or whatever your text fields are, last end days, and custom dates. And then you just fill in these values right here. And because we're doing parameter actions, we're able to take the parameter value from a secondary data source and pass that through into the parameter of our existing data set, and that's how you can do that. And then you would just bring in your secondary data source um, that I have saved right here. So you can just do that uh, as well. You can use either one if you would like, whichever one feels uh, the most comfortable for you. Depending on the number of lists of things that you would need to alias, this might be a faster way. OK, so now let's get to some of the other. So that's kind of how we did the, uh, the date filtering. Uh, and then our parameter action um, is very, very simple. If we look at our uh, actions here, we have a parameter value where we're just selecting this date select sheet. We're going to the target parameter is the date selector. And the field that we want to do is that date integer field uh, where we were mapping the alias value uh, to the parameter value. So if we just keep our eyes on this box right here, when I select my different values, you can see that that value changes, just like that. So now that we have our date parameter working as we need it to, now what I want to focus on is how I was able to show and hide those parameter controls whenever I select either last end days or custom days, custom dates. And basically what I did is I, ba I basically created what I like what I called uh, custom date push sheet. Um, and basically it's just a very simple placeholder uh, dimension and a placeholder text and basically removed everything uh, from the sheet, removed the tooltip, all the lines, everything like that. And then I created these, uh, these Boolean calculations that just evaluates my date selector to not be equal to whatever the value is that I want this sheet to. So this sheet is going to expand this sheet any time that my date selector is not equal to the value uh, that I'm using. So what's happening, basically if we, on the dashboard, this is a floating sheet right here. This floats right here. But this is a container. And watch what happens when I open, when I select a different date when I select a different button choice. So you can see these, these two moved away. And the reason for that is because this sheet has a filter on it that says that I would like values to show up only when 
this button selection is not equal to number four. And since it's on number two, it's opened up the sheet which pushes that uh, over to the edge. And then I just simply floated a container, a blank container, shaded to the same uh, shading as my, as my bar there. Uh, and just like that, so I'm kind of doing some, some smoke and mirrors, if you will, is what I like to refer to it as. And then whenever I do that, whenever I select custom uh, dates, according to my uh, calculation that I set up, uh, this date selector value is now equal to 4, which is the value I put in that Boolean calculation, and basically that sheet collapses. So uh, if, you've ever done, if you've ever done sheet swapping, that's a very, very similar concept, uh, only instead of swapping, I'm moving things in and out of view. And I basically just duplicated that same process for the last n, uh, which you can see is, uh, this is another floating object right here, but this is the entire container, and when I select last 30 days, you can see that it moves out because this sheet right here comes, uh, comes open and pushes that, uh, pushes that out. And then whenever I select the last n days, that collapses and brings that back into view. So those were the main highlights that I wanted to cover for this Workout Wednesday challenge. Uh, I've really been enjoying seeing everybody post their solutions uh, and talk about how, um, how they really like this challenge and how they're going to start using it uh, in, your, uh, in their work, uh, which is always encouraging for us on the Workout Wednesday team. So if you have any comments, questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at HipsterVizNinja. You can also leave a comment uh, below in the video, and uh, I will also um, be checking out those. So that's how I created this dashboard. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you next time. Go forth and viz.